Oh, okay, that's, so that, that's, that's just how it's going to look. Right there. Uh, oh, hi. Hey. You guys, I'm super excited about today. Aaron knows why. You don't yet know why. Well, probably title description totally gave this away. But we just test drove bum, bum, bum. our very what? first Rivian R1S. Whoop, whoop. Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning, morning. You never know when it is over, over. All that I know is we'll get older, older. So let us dance this side away. So we're super excited to share with you all about this amazing vehicle that has revolutionized the uh, electric car industry right? And yeah. it's a green machine. That was, well, that's the one that we tested over was, was so the, the what did you say? The big green goblin or something like that? That's right. Yeah. She called it the green goblin, our guide. But for, for y'all that don't know Rivian, uh, it's gone through a bunch of name changes over the years. And uh, most recently, uh, about what, two and a half, three years ago, uh, they started really uh, uh, marketing themselves and Ford and Amazon uh, jumped on board. You can also start seeing in some cities, you'll probably start seeing uh, Amazon delivery vehicles that were made by Rivian. And we'll show you the headlights in a little bit. And that's like a, a tall tale symbol of it. Uh, it's just like round, uh, big old eyeball looking things. Uh, that's super cool. Oh, hear me better. And I kind of want to see you like oh. in the video. Well, I'm here. So anyway, so Rivian, Ford. Yep. Amazon. You'll see them around your, your cities, potentially, especially the larger cities. They, um, they partnered with um, and actually released some of their design and tech and such with Ford trucks, with the electric Ford truck. The lightning or lightning. Yeah. So kind of the way that they really set themselves apart was Tesla, right? Being like, everyone knows Tesla absolutely amazing, super cool status symbol, right? With this vehicle. So Rivian kind of set itself apart by being the more off-road adventure style um, electric vehicle. Yeah. They're the first pickup truck and SUV vehicle ones until uh, Ford, who they partnered with, released the Lightning. And now you'll start seeing GMC and the Hummer and all these other vehicles are coming out. But uh, Rivian was the first one to kind of have the idea and start mar not mar well, marketing, but not producing yet. And they needed Ford's help and some other people's bankrolls to help uh, push them through. Yeah. So we kind of got on this bandwagon when our sister-in-law actually... Um, She's she told us about the company because on the DL she works for the company and we were like, what? Like we're we're super into I guess that's the millennial in me, but we're super into ways that we can make life more efficient. And also with gas prices being so ridiculous, like so ridiculous. We have we drive a suburban with our kids and this the Tesla Model X3 doesn't even it can't fit us. It can't fit our kids. So how many how many seats? Is that a five seater, a true five seater? No, it's technically a seven seater, but those seats in the back they are pop up and they're just super so small tiny. and cramped. Yeah, there's no leg room. Okay. So it, maybe your dogs could go back there, but like <laughs> well, I don't, children per se. with legs. Yeah, and I don't think a car seat with a baby would fit back there. And not that you would want to crawl in the back to put the baby in there either. So, And that was the thing that really sold us on the Rivian as we started looking into it. I mean, they were great with their tech as far as you could go onto their website, download the app, and you could put in the exact configuration that you wanted and build your vehicle. So with that being said, we did this almost two years ago. No, a uh, year and a half. Okay. So you had to make a reservation. It's a small yeah. uh, financial contribution, which is refundable. It's a thousand dollars. Yeah. When, whenever you, if you wanted to back out and there's, a, it was like before the plant in normal mm -hmm. Illinois was uh, created and they were actually That's, just purchasing hold on a second. it. That's the name of the city is normal yes. Illinois. Yeah. Okay. I just. 
wanted to. They, they took over an old, uh, an old factory from a previous car maker and uh, basically had to retrofit the whole entire thing to produce these specific vehicles. Sorry if my hat is blocking my face and eyes. Uh, I'll try to make my hat look up a little bit more. Um, anyway, so um, Rivian, they uh, were taking reservations for, I think, 2018 is when they really started it. We got in in 2020, right? At the end of 2020 is when we made our reservation. Is is, is that true? <laughs> or was it in the summer of 2021? No, it. Oh, you're right. It was what was no, it was November. Whatever that no no it was November of 2020. It was yeah. So then we came. We were in Korea and then we came back. Yeah, we came out here for some training for me, and that's when we were we stayed at uh, uh, your brother and and her, his wife's house down in Orange, and then we moved. Uh, okay, and, and we moved, and that's when we made the the reservation. That's when we heard about it for the first time. Cool. Okay, so then November 2020, we hear about it. We make our reservation. We do our thousand dollar deposit, and now we're in the game. And, and our sister-in-law was working, still is working for Rivian, but at their place there in, in the Orange County, area, Orange County, Irvine, I think it was or something. And so we felt, I think we felt like it was very legit <laughs> um, just because we know her and we trust her and, and it's non-refundable. So, I mean, it's not non-refundable. It, <laughs> it is refundable. So like, if you're like after three days, you're like, I don't know why I did that. I need that money back. Then you can just cancel your reservation and you just go back to in the line whenever you want to come back into it. Yeah. But I think also just the whole idea and concept, why we would just jump on a vehicle and a company that we had never heard of. I mean, we did tons of research because that's we're nerds like that. We like geeked out on researching it. We're like, how have we not heard about this company? This is amazing. But when you're when you have a backing, so it's not just Rivian and all of these private investors that are financially providing uh, startup costs. It it's major Fortune 500 companies, Amazon, right, Ford that are right. and that's just a couple of them that are putting in a lot of money to share tech so that they can, uh, you know, use it or they see promise in, in this company. And yeah. this company has been around for quite some time. And I don't know. Apparently since 2009. Yeah. And it, it was started off with cars. And then they had the idea of going into uh, um, off-road, um, not necessarily off-road vehicles, although they will do that. If you ever do some, some searches on the internet, uh, you'll see some like rock call, crawling type, uh, demo uh, videos that it's they so have done. Cool. It's super neat. But We're we'll, going to show you. We'll get into some, some of the things. the some of the specifics. Um, but uh, this is prior to them going public as well. So we got in before they became a publicly traded company. Um, and then, yeah. of course, we bought some some stock in it then, and it you know up and downs as stock markets go. So that's just a long term investment for. Us. So yeah. uh, that's how they got another large chunk of money so that they can purchase another um uh plant uh, plant uh, manufacturing plant and i think that was in georgia okay so but we don't need to get into all that right <laughs> so we put our reservation down we put our deposit down it was pretty seamless um i do want to say this is not sponsored by rivian so i mean rivian if you want to sponsor us <laughs> we're totally open to it because we love your company and we think you're absolutely amazing you're going to revolutionize the way families can experience um electric vehicles and it's good for the planet and i just love that they do suvs trucks and suvs because these pollution wise are some of the biggest culprits and this is renewable energy true renewable energy right. if you have solar or a or a, a windmill on your property or whatever it's basically free electricity then if you have an if it's producing enough for your house and everything yeah it's truly is amazing so this is not sponsored this is we're not experts and so we might say some things that maybe aren't completely accurate we've done the best we could with bringing you the most up-to-date and accurate information that we were able to get and we're trying to use rivian itself as a source there is a lot of what's the word just like haters out there i mean there's a word for them trolls trolls uh haters 
I'm not going to go hate. into names or anything, but yeah, there's a lot of people that have uh, differentiating opinions or they have made reservations in 2018, haven't received it yet. And they're frustrated yeah. because there's been a lot of um, changes with it. They, they are consistently keeping us up to date. Now this is big company keeping us up to date, not uh, specific people per se. So right. they'll send out the information. They'll send out emails and let us know like, Hey, sorry. Um, supply shortage issues. Um, uh, sourcing certain specific parts, which is, I know, supply issues, but those have delayed things. Also, the manufacturing plants, and they've had a fire at one of their plants because they're a new company that's just starting. I mean, it's, there's, and it's, it's expected. Been, it's been 2020. And it's where been 2020. There were shortages on everything yeah. toilet paper. We all remember the madness. But when, oh my gosh, back in 2020, when we made the reservation, there was literally like we looked online for like, how many jobs and where job like there was hundreds, probably thousands. I think there was like over a thousand jobs was that were available for people. And this is in 2020 when people like COVID had just kind of like gone away a little bit. So they were really hiring and really putting a lot of emphasis on manufacturing. Yes, but not just those jobs. There was over 1,746 jobs because I even looked into applying because I just thought this company was amazing. And I just had a gut feeling that they're going to go far. So that was non-manufacturing, working at the plant right. jobs. These yeah. were like, I mean, they even care about, there's a, been a lot of effort that they put into creating jobs for those that have jobs there. So one of the things that I was interested in was like bringing that that really positive atmosphere where talking about like interior design and decorating and, and essential oils and diffusing, like this company has gone above and beyond. So very cool. They've really set themselves apart. So let's kind of jump yeah, into I it. I guess now, that's the, the pitch for now, but we're going to show you guys uh, what we did, our configuration. So they basically have two vehicles. They have an R1T yep. and an R1S. And now there's more coming in the future uh, that, we can buy. Um, but if you're a major company or if, like Amazon, they make delivery vehicles, yeah, electric delivery vans, ve uh, delivery vans uh, but there's also in the works for other type of vehicles that they're going to potentially be putting out there. But right now it's R1T, like truck, R1S, SUV. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to like do some screen sharing here and we'll kind of just uh, back and forth talk. So we'll be looking up and down, of course. But um, the first um, thing I think think what we'll show you we're going to show the our configuration, configuration. and yeah. then we'll kind of jump into the video and we're going to give our common sure our commentary <laughs> uh our opinion on it okay yeah. and what our experience was so let's jump in i think here there we go awesome actually i'm gonna go like this no i'm not i'm gonna go like this perfect <laughs> all right so here we have, this is our color that we chose, which is limestone. This is what it looks like. We got the little upgraded. Um, uh, 22 inch rims uh, blacked out. We'll show you the, the what we settled on down below uh, in a few seconds here or now. But <laughs> yeah, just I guess kind of scroll it. They kind of gives you the estimated price and range and how many people it seats. Um, but there is some really, really cool things about this vehicle, which we'll talk about throughout the video. So here you see it, it says that it seats seven. The estimated range is going to be 303 miles. Um, I was going to say to the tank, but miles there per, is no miles tank. <laughs> That's just the range of the vehicle. So a full charge will get you 303 ish miles. Yeah. And there's a lot of variables with that. I just love how, it just looks so good. It looks so cool. It's sleek. It's sexy design, but yet it can fit my entire family and it's and all storage. electric and, and the storage. storage. We're going to show you that. It's so cool. So I'm just kind of clicking. So yeah, just here. click through, show them the headlights. Cause that, like I was saying, that's the tall tale sign, but I this, think this is our next, interior yeah. and it's, it's beautiful. And this next picture, I think <laughs> this is vegan is leather. Famous. I think it's like bamboo. It is a, it's two uh, at the top on the, instead of a normal um, 
I don't know what that's called at this single point. Single panel. It's a. It's not a single. It's two separate panels of right. a sunroof. So and it is tinted, so it allows a lot of light. It makes it seem even more spacious because your head's not. <laughs> yeah. At least for me, who's six three, is not like right on the top of uh, or the bottom of the of the roof. And we show that in the in the yeah. video too, so that'll be good. So this is just kind of the summary. This is in our own, like. Uh, our, I want to say back Sign office, in. yeah. But it's, our it's our own page that I mean, wherever we can adjust configurations, which we can do any moment that we want. But we're not going to do that, of yeah. course, today. <laughs> so we we went in on the adventure package. We weren't uh, early enough to get the launch edition, uh, and that comes with a few extra little perks. But uh, we got the adventure package, uh, the quad motor. So what that means That's is super cool. Every wheel has its own motor, which is <laughs> awesome. Independently. And they all work independently of each other, essentially. I mean, not when you're rolling straight down the road. They're all working the same. But there's some cool things that that allows to uh, But they're to creating um, energy. Yes. So Each it's, one. it's um, um, oh, man, what's the braking called? It's a regenerative brake, regenerative braking, where as you brake, which you almost don't even need to do, but as you break and start to slow down, it's putting a little bit of uh, electricity energy back into the batteries for future use. Yeah, super cool. All right. Uh, the color, like I said, is limestone. It's kind of that, it's really pretty. It's kind of that new color that you're seeing on the road with a lot of the yeah. SUVs. It's kind of like a subdued cars. gray with a little bit of a it's tiny shimmer green. to it. It's or bluish more. Yeah. Um, Blue green. Yeah. Okay. So the 22 inch sport dark wheels we did, our interior was ocean coast with the dark ash wood. This was one of the things that was delayed though, because we had chosen a different wood. That was part of the adventure package. Yeah. Itself. Or something. I can't exactly remember, but uh, we moved over the dark ash wood because they're having sourcing issues uh, with um, the original one that we chose. And then um, part of the adventure gear is it comes with tow hooks and then the wall charger and then right here you see our 100% refundable deposit. And if we want to update the configuration, we can do that. You could even change the model. If we're like, okay, we don't want the R1T or the R1S anymore, we'll go to R1T. We just click on that change model there. Yeah, probably should. Okay. So that is... That is that. So let's jump into so the video. Also what they do, and this is kind of a source of contention with a lot of people that top right there, it says processing estimate. Yeah. A lot of people have been complaining because that changes all the time. Uh, they just sent out an email a few days ago, actually, about a, maybe about a week ago, saying that they're updating their configuration, verify that that's what you want, um, and then we'll start giving you a, a more accurate timeline our original timeline was october of last year 2022 is when we were well, actually no, it was july of 2022 that we were originally supposed to take um possession, um, possession of it but <laughs> due to all of those things that we've already talked about it pushed and then the the late last year it was um april i think of of 2023 and now that they've adjusted their processing estimates and everything with new things going on they're trying to get a a better idea because they've ramped up production so much as far as a more accurate uh, timeline for delivery. Yeah. And, and I think the important thing, since we're talking about this to remember for those, if you're watching this video because you're like, Oh, I want to actually see a review of a test drive and you're waiting for your test drive or you haven't gotten that far yet because we, no one was doing like R one S test drives <laughs> unless you were like, really high up YouTuber or something. So we wanted to do this from just a very normal, and a rough. personal, <laughs> raw experience raw, to, yeah. to share with you guys. But the thing to remember is everything from the quad motor wheels to the headlights to the app configuration, everything they're building from the ground up. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So a lot of us probably don't remember or weren't even old enough to remember when Tesla was doing this. And they had a hard few years. Yeah, this is these are growing pains. This is normal for a new company that is doing something that are pioneers in their field and is doing something very revolutionary. So, you know, just try to try to have some grace and 
and also just know like it's going to be so worth it. And I think that's why doing the test drives is really helpful because. Oh, absolutely. Hope deferred makes yeah. the heart grow sick. So. so the R1Ts are what they were making first. Um, and people have started receiving those as of about middle of last year uh, a lot. And then now they're starting to do a lot more of the R1Ss as well. So you'll see R1Ts out in the road. And you've probably already seen them if you have any knowledge of Rivian at all. Um, you've seen them on the road. Yep. But you probably haven't seen R1Ss. We've seen maybe two. Well, we've spotted one. There is an R1S. I would love, like, if you are the, <laughs> or if you are the owner of this R1S, and so that you guys know, R1S stands for the S stands for the SUV, and right. then the R1T T is for truck. But there is one that's white. I've seen here in Reading. You sure they weren't like transitioning through? No, I've seen her like two or three times. Oh, cool. So, girlfriend. Comment below and let me know yeah, if that's you. you. Oh, we should be friends. The white was actually <laughs> our original um, color that we chose. We chose the white exterior with the black uh, yep. rims, uh, blacked out rims like that with the white um, interior. Yeah. And then we went on uh, the the first drive and we were like, nah, this, this one in the sunlight looks fantastic. And it kind of sets it apart, uh, yeah. this limestone. So that's what we, we, love it. And we it changed it. And you're not going to tell as much if it's dirty. It's going to hide true. some of that dirt a little better because we got lots of kids, lots of fingerprints and stuff. All right. So we're going to hop over to the video and we're going to show you our guide here is going to show you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm wearing the same sweatshirt there as Love I am right it. now. That's Shannon. <laughs> she was amazing. So, we yeah, absolutely. she's a guide. They, they assign you a guide. I don't think she's our guide yet because we don't have a vehicle, but. She also does the test drives and stuff that you make appointments through. Um, but we we uh, met her, and if she's still around, we hope she's our guide when we. Those uh, are we the get yeah. Those are the original like wheels that just comes with the package. Yeah. But we upgraded because we just like our wheels. We have about six better. different uh, <laughs> wheels to choose from, different a couple different sizes. But so we're just kind of going through the the layout. I set the front uh, passenger seat to where I would be comfortable and then I sat in the uh, second row there to where I was comfortable to see how much leg room there is. Mm -hmm. um, and as you saw there was there was a, a good amount. I'm 6'3", so um, any kid or even an adult would be totally fine. And then those that second row does move forward and back. Yeah, it, like it's on its own little track or yeah. grid. And and I sit in the back back as 6'3", which is two seats back there. She just let it let me in there. But I get in there, and then you're going to move those seats front and back. It's, it is a little tight, so smaller kids would be better. Adults would be okay, but um, you're going to be possibly hitting your knees if you're pretty tall. But you still have all that trunk space, too, which I like. <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of neat i have her moving around the seats for me while anastasia is doing some commentary in the video which we're just going to talk um over yeah, it most of it most of my commentary was like oh my gosh this is amazing <laughs> oh my gosh i can't believe that i that we're actually experiencing this right now so you can see my knees right there and that's with the second row seat where i set it up at third yes the second and row. then you're sitting in the, the third, third row. row stationary doesn't do anything there's plenty of headroom plenty of side to side uh room so it's super nice. And she just moved that middle seat back that to second row. No, she pushed oh, it all back, the way back so that you would know what it feels like. Ah, yeah. And then I was like looking up at the at the roof there. And then this is the kids or the second rows. They have uh heated seats. And then what are you wanting to do? Oh, I was just going to pause it here in a second. Um, I think <laughs> if it's going to be there, but she's just kind of telling us about how to get in and out. And it's very new um, kind of tech on some of it. So not exactly what you would expect uh, typically from a SUV. Yeah. Everything was just a little bit different. Like even that slider that we just saw in the bottom corner. Yeah. So this so is an air compressor yeah. that you can fill up tires for when you're off-roading. And if you need um, to fix a flat or repair a tire and then put it back on and fill it up, you're good to go. And we'll show all that kits here in a little bit. Yeah. And so here's Aaron just kind of messing with everything. He's talking about how he feels in the space, 
where his knees are at. If you if you want to rewind the video on your own, you can see where my knees are at with that seat all the way back. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of tight if you put that second row all the way back. And that's kind of, and I have her sitting there to see how much room is there too. But also what you can see is there's a good amount of space. And so what they wanted was to be able to put car seats in the back next to each other. So you can put... <laughs> five car seats in this vehicle, which there is not another vehicle out there that you can actually do that with, which I thought that was Super as a cool. mom. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Great feature. Way to go, Rivian. And then here we get to see the front panel. So now he's getting ready to kind of test drive it. It's this was super strange to us. So the way the pedals work, are they're like you feather them yeah so they have different <laughs> that that center touch screen changes the the mode you can lift and you can create lift as in raise your vehicle up a few inches i don't know what the max was anymore or you can lower it down and it also does it at certain t uh, speeds as well to for better aerodynamics and and performance of the vehicle um but that center touchscreen basically does everything you need to do and we're going to get back to it here in just a second or two but you control everything and one of the things that anastasia was just talking about was as you you can take your foot off the the, the gas <laughs> the gas pedal the yeah. accelerator acceleration pedal and the vehicle is kind of like a golf cart where it will slow down uh, on its own and stop so you don't even need necessarily braking but you can adjust how much pressure Right. how fast that is going to slow down for you. So it's essentially one pedal driving, which was kind of a weird thing. I was, I was pretty intimidated by it at first, but then when we were doing it, it was, it was really cool. Yeah. So this is your frunk, right? Your front trunk. trunk, super cool. And right there, you could pop that out and that actually becomes your own little cooler. Yeah, there's a little and it's drain not little. there. It's huge. She'll point out the drain here in just a second. <laughs> and in that little uh, zip bag is all of the charging cables, which they don't have to be stored in there, but that's just where they keep it. And this thing will hold a lot of luggage. Not a lot of luggage, I shouldn't say that, but a lot of stuff as a storage area. Because you compare that with the back, um, you know, the the motors are on the wheels. There is, right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a sled bottom to it. So yeah, it's, skateboard it's bottom. Skateboard bottom. So it's flat. There's nothing underneath it but batteries underneath the seats. Right. So I think that's also why you're getting that really good leg room in the back because typically sure. yep. with your SUVs like our Suburban, it kind of does this like bump up in the back. So it makes your legs have to be that much closer to your chest. And it's very uncomfortable for anyone who's tall to sit back there. Where with, with the Rivian R1S, because it's on that skateboard frame <laughs> platform, you do, like Aaron was saying, it's flat. So you're able to actually have the same amount of leg room as you would have in the very front, as you would have in the very back, dropping your legs down. And then what I liked about this was I can do a Costco run and put all of my freezer stuff in that cooler there with some ice. And I could drive 45 minutes, an hour, whatever two hours or if you're going to go camping and you want to yep. do that, that that could be your front ice chest or if you're going to go hunt oh, and you're going to be cool. gone for a few days um you can get some ice and put it in there and put your uh whatever you found or hunted and put that in there you can even put there fish in there i suppose but this is the charging port it's a one touch char charging port and there's a couple of different variances that you have as far as what kind of uh, charging it has and that lever if you're not watching the video and you're just listening to this i would recommend you go and watch this video because yes. it's totally worth it you get to see a lot yeah that we're not talking about but that is really cool because it's seamless and it's right in the front she was so she was cute. showing off <laughs> she was showing off so another cool thing about this vehicle there's actually a couple of a, a lot of things that are really cool but we one of the this. things that i found fascinating is fascinating yeah not even this right, i'm gonna start with this and then get into it but you have a key fob and i think she'll show it here in a little bit yeah and you walk up to the vehicle and those handles pop out as you get into a certain proximity now you can adjust it for just the driver's side for security reasons or all of the the doors however you want to set mm -hmm. it up but once you get close enough to the vehicle it just automatically pops out 
and then you open it up, you get in. And then the thing that's fascinating, there is no shifting into drive. Right. What? It's, it's just you don't ready. park. You don't drive. <laughs> it's just you get in and you push the gas and you go. Slowly. You push the gas slowly because it could go well, yeah. really fast. This has a acceleration, a, a phenomenal uh, zero to 60 time. If you guys want to look it up, it's in like the four. No, it's in the fours, three. I believe. So look it up. Really? Either way, I mean, nobody's going to be speeding up that fast per se. Normal. And what but. he just did there is he just touched a little sensor underneath that bumper. And then that frunk came down and it makes a little chirping sound. It's like, chip, chip, like in nature and the lights flash. So it's kind of your warning. But if he had left his hand there, there is a sensor. So it wouldn't close all the way. So that's where they pop out. Too. And then that's the handles for the door. And I was trying to see if I could like push them in. They are very secure. Yeah. <laughs> they are not going in unless the driver pops them in. Or if you have the fob, you lock it lock and it. it just seals up like. So this is a, uh, really like a, I can't remember what they call it. It's like a, up, like a, like a tailgate split. split, something or other, which is kind of neat, but, um, it allows you to be able to carry some stuff. If you put those seats down, you can still put some large pieces of wood or whatever. If you don't have like, you know, it kind of makes up a bed a little bit. And then all of this is just more storage. That's actually where a spare tire is going to go. Now, one of the big drawbacks is it's not a full size spare. It's a, a smaller spare oh, Okay. for the R R1S. The R1T, it's the a truck size. is a full size spare. Okay which is probably the draw one of the drawbacks of this. But you can pull that out. I would probably even pull out the oh, spare. Oh, that's that's the air compressor. My bad. Oh, that was That was a, the other thing. <laughs> the other thing was a cigarette lighter type thing. Oh. I believe, but the air compressor where you can adjust. I was like, "Where's?" Yeah, I thought that was an extra charging. No. Point. This the is back. the uh air compressor attachments and the hose. It's like a 150 foot hose or 125 foot hose or something. So it's pretty big. And then it comes with a first aid kit as well on the other side, which I'm grabbing right now. But this is a this is huge. The amount of storage and space that you have because you're not dealing with an engine <laughs> and I mean mostly like that. Like you just have so much extra space. So I know like a concern that Aaron had It was a significant concern. Yeah, was there wasn't gonna be enough space. He's like, we're gonna have to keep our suburban because we won't have enough space we're actually this has equal to dare i say it even more space but it's it's allocated differently and that could be the catch for certain people depending like if you have giant oversized luggage or something it might not fit in that front area as comfortably as softer sided bags or something okay yeah i mean right but giant luggage also doesn't fit in our suburban well, it does <laughs> so. but just very limited amount but this has also roof racks where you can you can um mount it up top. Mount to the top you can put your surfboards or your bikes or whatever on top as well strap it on yeah, yeah. and this has a towing package of course but look at the depth on that yep. like absolutely amazing she put those back seats down but it's just has tons of room it's just clean looking um it's super like just it's just pleasant to the eye really it really is they did a really good design all right here's the key fob she's going to show us so they have they have two different kinds of key fobs so this is your like traditional one your lock your unlock your alarm <laughs> opening up the the oh, back hatch there yeah. and then she was telling aaron he was getting excited because he was like okay i'm gonna actually get to drive it <laughs> <laughs> we've waited for a long time y'all like long time but that's all the right. end of that video. Then we're going to kind of switch over to this next one. All right. So here we are driving. Yeah. Well, technically here Aaron is. That's me. In the driver's seat. And he's just kind of messing with his mirrors and such. Yeah. So the interesting part about this is there's no like phys uh, there is physical buttons, but very minimal. Yeah. Um, and I was adjusting the mirrors with the physical buttons on the steering, steering wheel. wheel but. <laughs> Everything else is pretty much controlled by the center touch screen. And you'll see here in a few seconds about the ventilation or the, the air coming to the driver and the passenger. Um, and you can adjust it. And it's a few different button pushes on it. It's kind of kind of annoying, I would suppose, because you don't have something physically that you're touching. So you don't you almost have to take your eyes off to look at it. 
it's an adjustment. It it's is just like with anything when you're getting a new car. And so because this is, you know, a different company doing a very different thing with the SUVs and trucks on these electric vehicles, they are, they're kind of learning as they go as well. You so. didn't have your purse on the purse hook. <laughs> What's up with that? I didn't know there was a purse hook. The purse hook right next to the USB-C charging I thought port that and was the headrest the, right oh, there. Oh, oh. I don't know. It's a bag hook, maybe not a purse hook. I don't know. I thought that was to adjust like the no. top of the seat. I guess not. So I think I kind of messed up earlier when I said a really cool thing about this vehicle is you don't have to shift it into park. I was in a different mind space, but what I was thinking was, or what I in intended to say was, you still have to shift to park to reverse and oh, all that man. fun stuff. I you know can't it's use not like that. mental know, telepathy, right? be like, now I'm going to drive. But <laughs> you don't have to push an ignition button or put a key in. To start you get it. in, you shift, you drive, you get out by putting it into park, of course, because <laughs> we're not crazy, even though it's going to hold you there. Uh, put it in the park and then you get out. There's no on off switch, which yeah. is mind blowing to me. It, it mind -blowing. is mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing. That's an adjustment. Talk about adjustment. That's an adjustment. That was very bizarre at first. It was like, yeah. oh, okay. So we're just we're just going. Here we go. And, and driving this vehicle, there is a few bizarre things with it. Not yes. only this touch screen taking your eyes off, but I'm <laughs> sure that's similar to a Tesla. I don't I've never driven one, so I don't know. We've driven in them. Though. We've driven in them. I just we haven't had I haven't sat in the front to mess with things in a, okay. in a Tesla, but in the Rivian, now I have. Yeah. So taking your eyes off the road to find the spot on the on the screen to be able to adjust, it's kind of a goofy thing. This is adjusting right now. You're adjusting the air. Yep. And what I really liked about this is you can do this and having the air blowing directly in your face or if like your armpits are getting sweaty, you could face it down by just a touch. And I think the <laughs> Because, you know, those of us that just our armpits get sweaty while we're driving. You mean the ones that Maybe run nervous. hotter? Yeah, I'm just always warm. And this guy, like, is not. And so. We're like oil and vinegar. Yeah. Well. When it comes to temperature. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it would have made more sense to say, like, fire and ice. <laughs> it's true. We're like fire and ice <laughs> when it comes to temperature. There you go. So he's, like, usually always cold. I'm usually always hot. But what I liked about it was he can adjust it on the screen and I can adjust my air vents on the screen. No more. Do you have to like manually do it? And it only goes like up and down yeah. or, or then you can shut it so off like, completely. And the people in the back <laughs> second row will have the touch screen as well for their yes. own stuff um, to be able to move the temperatures around. There's USB C ports there for your phones. There's no USB one, two, threes. It's all USB C stuff. And we love this, uh, this design here too. Yeah. I think it's great. This was the your center your center console and we're always doing the elbow elbow check you know like having the person who's driving move their elbow off and so this was cool because it just opens up you can either do one side or you could do both sides those of you that are watching the video you oh, can see it oh super cool right here <laughs> i love this idea the it's a portable speaker and a portable like speaker and kind of like a, a electronic lantern like a light source yes. so if you're camping or at the beach or whatever, you have some way to get music and some lights that's consistently recharging when it's in the vehicle. And, and it lasts for some time. I don't remember what her out the number of hours it was. I think she said. said four to six hours. Something like that. Which with is a full charge, which is crazy. Which good. is wild. If you were like, I want to binge watch my favorite YouTube, YouTube video <laughs> podcast, Better With You, then you could totally do it yeah. on the go. Sit around and the campfire. Because you can cast to the, min the middle screen, right? You can. Yeah. It's so right. fun. I'm going to pause it for just a second because there's another thing. Where my phone is sitting, which is in between, it's right in front of the center console. You can't see it, but you probably did before. It's a wireless charging port as well. Yeah. And if you have a small enough phone that accepts wireless charging, you can do two phones put there. And I know people have made modifications to it uh, with their own like 3D printer type stuff. But uh, you can charge your phone there. And then there's also ports you can plug in non-wireless charging phones too. <laughs> but here we are. We're getting ready to drive. I shifted into park. And then uh, it's kind of a really interesting thing. It's true. Uh, I don't know if we've said it before. One pedal driving. It yes. could be. 
yes. especially at lower speeds. What you, that means. You didn't shift it into park, but you shifted into oh, drive. Well, I mean, if I'm in park, then I'm in park. So I shifted into drive. <laughs> I Always had, fact checking I had me to over do here. that for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I shifted into drive and then gave it. And when you shift it to drive, it doesn't go. You have to give it the gas, the acceleration. Right. Um, and you push on the, on the, on the pedal. gas pedal, the accelerator. And then you take your foot off and it stops. It like slows to a stop. And it it's not wild. slows to a stop. It stops. It, it comes to a it kind of a, not aggressive. You can adjust that adjustment. And I'll hit play now because so you can see it. Mm -hmm. And you can adjust that amount of stoppage. I don't know what the verbiage is for it. So okay. I apologize with the stoppage, but it literally stops you. You don't have to touch the brake. And that's what I'm like, oh, no brake, huh? All right. <laughs> well, let me put my glasses on. Let's get ready for this fun stuff. But here she's adjusting the amount of uh the mode stop the mode for stopping right and it's a lot more aggressive with the level that she put it at which is kind of interesting <laughs> and and the cool thing here too is so there's three different modes that you can drive in that just automatically comes with the r1s so you're going to have your all-purpose mode you're going to have your like off-road um all-terrain mode yeah. And a then sport mode, and then you're going to have your sport mode. But they have other modes that's that they're coming out with, like snow mode and some right. Other and that's going to be part stuff. of their that's going to be part of their upgrade. So very similar, right, to updates. Tesla updates. Yes, their updates. Yes, got gotcha back. <laughs> <laughs> um, part of their updates is you can get an update, and none of these updates are going to be life threatening or anything. And you can you can interrupt me when you get ready to make this like 360 turn here. Well, we'll come back to the updates, but this is um, like a tank super turn. tight turns. <laughs> so one of the modes that they kind of originally started putting out on their promotional videos uh, was tank turns where the tires are working in opposite directions to do a true 180 or 360 turn. So if you go up a dirt road and it's really tight and narrow and you have just enough room to whip the nose around and go the opposite direction you can engage this mode and it turns the vehicle around on a 180 or 360 or whatever degree you need to you're like uh, turn around. spinning it's, on a yeah, platform yeah it's, it's that... true like you're not moving forward or back and no like parallel parking well i mean yes parallel parking <laughs> but um no three-point turning and stuff like that no so this it, was like super yeah, tight but it that's made me very sick but that's tank mode <laughs> and they have not released it to my knowledge yet but but this that was more the 360 turn which maybe we can yeah. show that here uh after this on the website where oh, yeah, with, yeah, the yeah. Quad, with the quad with the quad motor, motor yeah. all-wheel drive you this is basically the next step from right right from your tank turn so yeah. It's it's not necessarily needed in normal everyday driving, so I'm sure they're probably ironing out some software and some hardware details or whatever. But um, it's a, just a cool feature since these vehicles are made to go off road. Off road, they're made to go and explore places where you're allowed to drive to, and get to places that may not have roads, and you right. have to turn around in a tight spot. Yeah, or like in the snow, uh, and different things like that. There's some really cool videos of this vehicle since it's all waterproof from basically the top down of, you know, people tugging boats out to uh, almost, almost mere to height, the, yeah. maybe not, maybe halfway up the door. There's people like plowing roads with these things with snow on, like do some research on it's some pretty uh, amazing and uh, eye opening things that this vehicle can do if given the right situation. This would have been great when we were, uh, when we didn't get stuck in air right, quotes right when we didn't get stuck in the snow but we were looking to go on we that did get stuck so ferry. did you say we didn't get stuck because we did <laughs> i was saying in quotes we didn't get stuck oh okay well we did get stuck <laughs> we totally got stuck okay so um <laughs> this is shot in uh apple's amazing cinematic view yes. so that's why it's kind of focusing on people rather than the things but uh, that we want to show you but rather than the technology yeah. super cool technology pretty similar to a tesla i can understand uh, or i can i can imagine since i've never driven it but we've been in it but um it kind of just adjusts uh gives you all sorts of different things there's no miles per gallon on this thing right because <laughs> you don't have gallons of anything other than maybe milk in the front trunk that we showed you <laughs> yeah. but um 
I, kilowatt per hour kind of a thing, I think is what it was. And you here you were showing the distance of the vehicle in front of you. So it's actually coming yeah. up and it's showing up as like a, like a ghost car. And that's something else that they do. The Rivians do just like Tesla's technology does, but it's bringing up so that, you know, if there's people, if there's vehicles, what's around you in that space. And also the vehicle itself, uh, the tech on the vehicle itself is taking in that information. So it won't let you, if there's a person, if it's sensing there's a person in front of you or a child behind you, it's not going to let you run over that, that person. Safety first. Yeah. Yeah. So I find that very comforting because I feel like sometimes as humans, <laughs> I know this could become a whole thing where people are like, oh no, tech is going to take over the robots, AI. It's but all that's, taking that's over. That's when the it's working for your, but the, it's, the common good. This really. is when it's a tool and yeah. it could be an extra pair of eyes for you. And so that just made me feel really, really good, really safe in this vehicle. And, and I was telling Aaron, this is the one vehicle that I have, I've driven lots of different kinds of vehicles. We've owned lots of vehicles. But I feel so safe in this vehicle, I think because the center of gravity being so low. And this part right <laughs> here, uh, she feels safe, even though I kind of scared her a little bit. I talked to both of uh, Shannon and Anastasia. I was like, I'm going to give it some gas. I want to see what it does in the turn accelerating. And she made a comment of like, see, it handles really well kind of thing. But she was probably a little scared. And I'm sorry if you're seeing this. Uh, now, Poor but Shannon. it was, it was an, a, a rapid acceleration. I'm not trying to do the, you know, the zero to 60 in three or five seconds or whatever. I'm just trying to give it gas to see if how fast it will get to like, not necessarily freeway speeds, but entering into a freeway safely speed. And as I did it in the turn, it was a little bit of a loose gravel area, not like dirt. It was paved of course, cause it's in Sacramento, but, um, I gave it gas and it kind of skidded just a little bit on that loose gravel, but it literally caught itself super fast and it wasn't even a skid. It was more of just like a kind of like the tires had to like, Oh yeah, we got to grab. And that kind of like a momentary uh, lapse in it. So yeah, it was really cool. And then this right here is the type of cruise control. That's the adaptive cruise control, which is really cool. And she's showing him, you have to keep it. It's going to chirp at you. If you don't keep some type of connection to the steering wheel, like you don't, this pressure. you don't have to have it. Yeah. It's pressure sensitive. So it will, it'll give you three warnings and then it will not allow you to do adaptive cruise control. But the adaptive cruise control is very cool because it is very, um in tune with everything that's going on around you so it's going to actually adjust your speed based on the vehicles driving in front of you as well as the spacing of that vehicle and your vehicle so like it's keeping that three or five second safety margin and it'll slow if the truck in front of you slows down it'll slow you down to maintain that safe uh three, five, seven, whatever seconds. And then the other thing that she was showing me there was the lane assist. It was basically staying within the, the lines. Um, again, hands need to be on the control on the wheel and it won't do it in a turn per se. I was kind of like testing it a little bit, but your hands have to be on the steering wheel and naturally you just kind of want to turn with the vehicle anyway. So it's not a big deal. It's not a self-driving vehicle yet. Right. Um, it's but kind I'm of sure technology. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the tech has to also work with the laws of the land sure. and so that kind of puts us back into the updates thing yeah where oh, you yeah, can yeah. you can what i love about this too is it's pretty seamless when it comes to any issues that you're needing so maintenance wise for your vehicle updates for your vehicle can all be done remotely from your home and rivian will send you to your app will send a little update saying okay it needs to be updated for this it'll tell you specifically what it's going to be doing and how long that's going to take and so if it's going to be a couple of hours you can choose to either wait till you get to the office to right. do it or wait till you get home and you go to bed and i think you can let probably it it. set it for automatic as well you're like oh they you know an update's coming tomorrow night and you're not driving tonight so you or tomorrow morning or whatever so you can just automatically say hey yeah when it comes in just download it at this time yeah because it they do take two or three hours right that's what you were saying yeah so. it, and and longer too she was yeah. saying it can take four six hours and so. i'm sure like i don't know there, there's no you already said it too like no safety issues with driving the vehicle without the update but yeah. if it was a safety critical update of some sort 
it's going to be probably worldwide known <laughs> that don't drag your vehicle until you do this. So you know how like they do that with certain things, like not a recall, but they'll be like, well, kind of like a recall, like it's not safe to drive it. They might even disable it. I don't know, which would be really crazy. Okay. Well, we don't know about any Conspiracy. of that. Conspiracy. <laughs> but anyways, this was amazing to drive. I felt really safe when Aaron was driving it. Sport mode was super smooth. Scared but safe. I just got scared in the turn because he tried to act like he's a speed racer. You oh. see that little uh, in and out blurry right there where she's pointing at the screen. Top down 360 parking. Really cool. Yeah, you got that aerial view as well as the backup camera and the side cameras. And then so. shift it into park and, and step out. No on off. Still white. Blows my mind. Still blows my mind. <laughs> All you do is take your foot off the accelerator and the car just comes to a nice smooth stop and it's very grounded. Like we said, center of gravity is yep. really low. So not a big tipping radius on this. And that so, was a great drive. Yeah. Then. So Anastasia's <laughs> turn, she's going to drive and then uh, we'll jump over to uh, where we'll show you kind of a little bit of the R1T. Yeah. It was, they were doing the lift on it. So it, it's currently lifting right now. It's rising up and you'll see here in a moment, you can kind of see it's moving just a little bit, but it goes, it's pretty cool. It's amazing. This is with a different gentleman that helped us out because she had to go and run and take care of something else. But they let us look at this R1T uh, T and kind of see there's some cool things that are different about the t than the s and we can kind of really quickly talk about them if needed <laughs> if we have time but it, it's still rising up you can kind of see the the shocks underneath there and those are 22 inch rim tires that are on this so that's how high up it's and going that's the white one that we originally thought about getting the uh the white color yeah on the outside for the r1s though yeah so the front uh, the trunk, the front is what they like to, well, I don't know if they like to call it. That's what it's been <laughs> kind of dubbed. The front trunk uh, is the same. There's nothing different about it. It um, just looks like it has a face on does. the front. I love that. And then this, the another kind of interesting thing that they said was the R1T is a little bit longer than the R1S really? because of the bed. Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, this has that hard sliding tonneau cover that they've kind of discontinued. They were having some malfunctions with it. Oh, let me back it up and pause it because this video is almost over anyways. But that opens up and it's a um, pass through. It's a pass through. So there's exact same door on the other side of the vehicle and you can lower it down and it holds like 250 pounds on this step that folds down this way. And it's pass through. You can put things in there. They, they had originally um, produced a camping like sink and um not grill but like an electric stove top uh man, a thing with that you can do a um uh a, a sliding rack type thing there's a bunch of different things that you can put in there but it's a complete pass through you can go golf clubs will fit in there nicely um other things will fit in there super easy and super cool uh comfortably and you just it's a pass through and it allows you to get on top of the roof if you need to as well as a step up or to tie something into the bed if you're shorter or something along those lines. But it's just a really cool feature that they have uh, added to this kind of like wasted space on normal trucks because the drivetrain has to go through that area. Yeah, we had some, I did have some pictures, but I, I guess I don't have them there. You probably can actually see it on the website though, oh, pretty yeah. easily. And then, um, but it's a great place to also hide your guns if you're going to be going yeah. hunting. There you go. Or deer. Another cool thing about uh, this this one is they have a camping modification. No, so not only that's all the way up, and I'm six three, so it's up to my stomach um, <laughs> as far as height off the ground. And that doesn't that only goes to a certain speed. But another cool thing that I was going to say with that um, pass through with the. Um, you're gonna you're gonna make me get sidetracked here sorry it with the pastor with the camping um like the uh camping cooking kit? setup that they've kind of have to make some tweaks on it then they're gonna put it back out there but you can get a a, a two or a four person bed uh tent sorry on the back of the truck oh yeah that's that, true. and that can and that pass-through step is kind of like a step to get into it i think they also have a different step that they can use so full on and it's heated and like the whole thing, like it's super cool. So if you're going to be camping in a colder environment, which typically people do because it's in the mountains and such, um, 
it, it'll keep it heated or not heated, but just in a more comfortable, uh, so you're not sleeping on the ground too. All right. So we could probably even do like a Q and a on this. If you guys are wanting at a future point, but we're just going to kind of go over this. So this is again on our portal on our, um, yeah, on, on our app. Sure and what to expect next um they will contact you to confirm your configuration and discuss next steps before our delivery date we'll be able to secure financing and insurance and arrange for a trade-in if you'll have one please reach out to customer support with any questions we've already reached out to customer support you want to go i was going to ask you a question because i know the answer i was going to ask it because it might be a a question that somebody else has but okay um a trade-ins Yes. That's something new that they're doing, correct? Yes. And it's really cool with the trade-ins because they will actually take, they won't just take a car. First, they were only going to do trade-ins that you owned outright, which that's great. And that's a huge benefit. But they're now taking trade-ins where you are paying a payment on it. So if you are upside down, though, on your vehicle, you will have to make that right. Okay. So you, you got to make to yourself... Pay make uh whatever they're going to give you offset that cost with with the down payment yes so you can't take anything and put it onto the rivian on top of it because they are doing their own financing um the other the other question was is in-house finance they're doing their own financing and i'm sure you can probably do an outside financing source i'm sure as well right you can if you want to do it independently i don't know the the terms and everything with that if you've got like stellar credit if you're doing 50 percent down or something then sure but so look at this uh middle picture here uh the orange that's the um coyote uh, what is it called i can't think of the color name but uh look at that that thing is crawling up that um <laughs> that little creek bed but there's pictures of them like doing actual rock crawling probably not into the extent that some of these jeeps can do but super Im- impressive type stuff but um <laughs> There you go. Your dual motor, enhanced dual motor and quad motor, getting to know them. It's decoded for you. I have no idea how you do it, but. I don't know what you're doing. Oh, there you go. You just slide down. In early 2023, the R1T and R1S will be available to reserve in three all-wheel drive configurations. So dual motor, enhanced dual motor and quad motor. So we got the quad motor, which is like Aaron already explained, the four motors going back to the financing part you guys will see uh if you look back on the uh the pricing and this is just going to talk about the differencing but it just looks cool they've got so many fun go check it out just check, go check out some, their website yeah do some performance if that's your thing um questions or comparison side by side like they'll do they did an r1 uh t speed test with a um shelby pickup uh, ford shelby trucks which is like super crazy high horsepower um on it but the rivian out like was faster than them and then they have all these cool videos and stuff but what i was gonna say about the financing was is you'll see if you look back at the at our pricing ours is at a pre um (laughs) pre cost adjustment based off of cost of goods right so it's going to be a little bit more money now (laughs) due to inflation (laughs) and other things but um yeah, so the pricing is a little bit higher than uh, what you would, what we reserved it for. The Rivian Quad Motor All Wheel Drive delivers instant power and independently adjusts torque at all four wheels for precise wheel control in virtually all conditions. Proactively adjusting power at each individual wheel enables four wheel torque vectoring, the ability for each wheel to independently help accelerate, decelerate, and even turn the vehicle, providing the highest levels of on-road performance and off-road capability. This system is comprised of two drive units, one for the front axle and the other for the rear with an independent motor for each wheel. Powering the front axle is a compact 415 horsepower unit with 413 pounds of torque. What pounds of torque? (laughs) In the rear, a higher torque derivative delivers 420 horsepower and 490 feet pounds of torque. That's weird to me. Foot, Foot pounds. Foot pounds. Oh, okay. Together they deliver 835 horsepower and 908 foot pounds. 835 horsepower. You don't, there's no production (laughs) vehicles, gas vehicles that will do that. Right. 
guys, this is an that had electric, not been significantly modified. This is an electric vehicle. Like this is amazing. So when I'm when I'm saying have some grace and also understand they are pioneers in what they are doing. This is revolutionary. So a few reasons that you might want to choose a quad motor, which is the one that we did again, so we're fans, would be the maximum on-road and off-road performance, zero to 60 in as quick as three seconds. There it is. Sometimes you just got to get going, I guess. <laughs> when you're Aaron. <laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa. <laughs> more than 800 horsepower, more than 900 foot-pounds of torque. 11,000 towing for the R1T and 7,700 pounds for the R1S and then fully independent torque vectoring. So all in all, an amazing vehicle. We love it. We even think Aaron wants to get the R1T now. So, And I saw some reports. Uh, there you go. There's the comparison between the three. Uh, there's some comparison. I'm sorry, not comparison. There is some... Um, information out there that people are reserving and getting their r1ts in as little as 10 months there's a lot of variants that go in with that too as close as far as where you're close uh, how far you are away from the service centers and such oh did i just did i just make you feel sick with how fast i just did nah. <laughs> so all right hope you guys enjoyed this video yeah that was very full and complete and hopefully covered everything uh, we try to cover everything that we had been wondering about, the questions yeah. we had when we were trying to look this up. And we believe this is a great option for your family if you're wanting to go and get away from these crazy gas prices and also have a high performing vehicle that just looks good. It's good for the earth. <laughs> it can fit your family and it is made for you to take it on adventures. And that's what else we love is we talk a lot about how our marriage, we're a team and um, we're, the, we're the coaches of the team. And so being able to take our team with us and to go on adventures together, to go to the mountains, to go to the oceans, to go to the lakes and just experience life and not have things hold us back like trying to find a gas station and well, you got to find charging <laughs> ports now though. Yeah. But they have a thing with it. And what's cool about Rivian too, since they're so geared to the environment and uh, getting outdoors and experiencing places is they're uh, part of their charging network. Uh, they're putting in a lot of uh, charging ports. Uh, hold on before you go. Oh, this movable feast is the kitchen that is uh, on the truck that was, and they're going to upgrade it a little bit and change it around. But uh, kind of, but uh, their ports, their charging ports are. There's going to be a, a high number of them in each like national park or destination places that you're going to want to go to, um, or maybe visit, and then you can park it, or like you can charge it while you're taking your hike, or you can charge it while you are are surfing or right backpacking or whatever it is, which is really cool, which is super cool, yeah, which that's also kind of in there in the works too, and. Like Aaron was saying, this is where they're showing that little camping kitchen that gets built in, which is something you, you can add on. On the right side there. Yeah. And it comes with pretty much all the utensils and stuff that you need. Yeah, so Not cool. the food. <laughs> Not the food. Oh, and there's that the there's little the pop-up tent, tent that you were top, talking yeah. about. Yeah. So, I mean, essentially, you can turn this into your... your uh, a little motorhome slash camper. So with as much as this is offering and providing the price, I really think is so amazing because when you're looking at getting just a suburban these days, you're looking, you're starting in 90,000. It's the same price that we're paying right now. Yeah. And you still have to pay like two hundred dollars, <laughs> and for, you guys for if, gas. If you have the money <laughs> and you are really, really, really wanting to get this a vehicle, people are selling them already. Now there's going to be more than a hundred for it. Yeah, but uh, are. people are selling them currently across the U.S. <laughs> All okay. right, that wow. was pretty pretty long and that was thorough -ish. so in depth, but. 
that was amazing. I I feel like I got to experience it all over, all again, over again, and it made me really excited. So I was like, how much longer do we have? Uh, I don't think too much longer. No, I don't think so. I think we're, we're going to be the first half of this year. I think we'll be getting it by summertime. And we will update you guys when we actually get ours. We'll do a we'll do a a video uh, walk around with ours yeah maybe put all of our kids in there maybe our two dogs as well and just see <laughs> how it all fits with everybody it's gonna be awesome but not see but show you how it fits with everybody <laughs> all right so if you enjoyed this comment below and let us know if you have questions we can do a q a like yeah, we are absolutely we are willing to do that again we're not the experts but yeah. we can tell you from our personal firsthand experience yeah. what it has been like and we don't mind talking about the financing or the like usually those taboos. I mean, subjects. some of those things we can't talk about because we haven't experienced it yet, right? Yeah. But yeah. Once we do, we'll be able to <laughs> shed some light on it, I suppose, for people that have questions about it. All right. Well, until next time, guys, and uh we'll see you soon. Adios. Take care. We'll see you on the next episode. Stay tuned. Subscribe and save. Or subscribe and ring the bell. Either way. Okay. Uh, so let us dance this right away